Spring is here at last. It's time to transform the minivan into a very small camper van. All winter the components for the camper have been stored in the basement or in the house and now just need to be put back into the van. Once the second row bench seat is out and the back row are folded down into the floor, we are ready to start loading in the camping stuff. A few of the things stay in all the time. So there's the fire extinguisher, the side pockets, the metal ceiling strapping for the front curtain, the center console stays, all the wires going to the console can be disconnected if needed, but they and the battery compartment stuff stay in for the winter. The wiring running to the back of the van stays in place too. It runs under the floor, under the plastic threshold, and is tucked under the edge of the plastic sidewalls, with the extra bits coiled up under the stow-and-go seats. First up is the bed. Once the backrest is on, it can slide in in one piece. and one foot is shaped to lock into one of the anchor points on the floor to prevent it from moving or shifting. Next, I screw in the lower ends of the backrest supports. Same on the other side. The padded cushion for the backrest goes on with snaps. I call these the ears. They are notched to fit into place and are held with three screws. They were supposed to be a quick temporary fix so we could leave for our summer camping trip, but I haven't come up with anything better, so I guess they are here to stay. There is one on each side. They hold the reading lights and the USB plugs for the bedside. Here are those wires that run from the front for the electricals at the back of the van. One set of wires goes across to the left side of the van. I'm still working on the best way to hold them in place. This wire loom is too fiddly to set up each time. These notches are so the wires don't get pinched when the kitchen shelf goes in. All the wiring ends with spade connectors to make connecting and disconnecting them easier. I wrap each connection with some electrical tape to make sure the negative and positives can't touch and cause a short. I may look for better connectors in the future, which wouldn't have that worry. The slack in the wire gets tucked in between the bed and the van interior wall. This is the main kitchen shelf. I cut away most of the underside to make it lighter. I didn't do a very tidy job, but no one will see it because it's up underneath. The fit is quite snug and the front legs have been rounded to fit just inside the plastic edging. And now for the appliances for our kitchen. This is a 27 liter Coolatron thermoelectric cooler fitted into a custom made wooden box with extra insulation and a thermostat. I have a couple of videos showing how I did it. I'll put links to them up here. It plugs into a third wire that runs from the front. When connecting it, I have to make sure the blue dot for cooling lines up with the arrow. It's a thermoelectric cooler, and if you reverse the polarity, it will keep things warm. Useful, but not what I want. Now these wires are for the lights I installed up in the lift gate, which again connect with spade connectors. These clips keep the wires out of my line of sight when driving. They stick on with a 3M tape, but it's hard to get them to stay on a textured plastic. I like to test all the connections as I go along. Next, the water box with its jug, sink, and drawers. It is built around a Reliance 10 liter water jug, which has a really annoying spigot and seems to leak mysteriously now and then. It will feature in a future Things I Would Change video. These wires here go to a light inside that water jug compartment, which helps me see the water level. The garbage compartment is removable. The notches hold a plastic bag in place to use as a liner. The pegs on the underside fit into the holes in the base. The middle section is the pantry box with the stove compartment underneath. Now we need the kitchen drawers. All the drawers are basically just boxes with handholds on each side to make them easier to carry. All the kitchen supplies can stay in them and be carried in and out of the house as is. A nice little unplanned detail is how the drawers are held in by the edging, which keeps them from sliding out when driving. The awning is stowed down the middle of the van when it's not needed. This saves on wind drag on the highways. Now the bench section of the bed can go in, and the bed slats pulled out to meet it. Next comes the futon itself, and then with its sheets and blankets, of course. 
Almost all our clothing goes in these drawers under the bench. Again, the drawers are just wooden boxes and can be packed up in the house and brought out as is. Some bigger things just get stored loose under the bed, like our folding chairs, the mosquito screen room, things like that. This slot in the bench was made to exactly fit the 100 watt solar panel, but now that gets mounted on the roof for the whole summer. But it still makes a good spot to store the folding table, and the window covers just go under the mattress. Same thing on the other side. We have one drawer each, which is plenty of storage, except when it's really cold and we need extra coats and sweaters. And then I have an extra storage place for those. The potty kit goes under the seats. Another biggish stuff goes in on this side of the bed. This is an extra 50 watt solar panel, which can be hooked up and placed on the ground in the sun if needed. Our 100 watt solar panel will go on the roof now. On the Grand Caravan, I'm lucky to have these stone place roof rack bars, which I can unscrew and remove. I try as much as possible not to have stuff that would cause wind drag when driving on the highway, but it's just too darn convenient to have the solar panel mounted semi-permanently on the roof, so I had to compromise. I put a layer of silicone on the underside of the crossbars to prevent any scratching of the roof while manhandling it into place. The cables from the battery to the solar panel come up near the console and run under the plastic threshold then up the inside of the door. They then go under the panel and then connect with the MC4 connectors, which came with the panel. I made carefully shaped crossbars for the panel to keep it as close to the roof as possible, and they attach using the threaded inserts from the stone place roof racks. The bolts for the solar panel are stainless steel 5mm bolts. I tighten them down well with the wrench to make it slightly harder to seal the panel. I didn't leave a lot of play when I drilled the holes, so sometimes I have to fight to get the last one lined up. The wires are then secured in place with tie wraps, either to the crossbar or to these stick-on plastic anchors. It's important to leave a loop at the bottom so water that runs down the cable can drip off and not run into the van. We're almost done now, just a few inside details still to go. These are the storage bags which I use for towels and extra clothes and they hang on the back of the seats. The mosquito screens. This one in the back which protects anyone in the sleeping compartment when the kitchen is open. They tuck into the plastic edging where it meets the headliner of the van and then they get tied back for driving so they don't block the view. And these ones for the back windows. They could stay in all the time, but they get quite dusty, so I like to take them out and wash them at least once a season. Fiddling with these takes almost as much time as everything else in the van put together. But once they're in, they can stay until fall. I haven't timed it exactly, but it takes definitely less than half an hour to put everything in. The longest parts are the wiring and the mosquito screens. And then it's done. So we're all ready now for our first camping trip in our cozy little camper van. Thanks for watching. And if you like these videos, please think about subscribing and clicking the notification bell to find out when more videos get posted. Stay safe and happy camping.